Somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. That's the answer. Hey this is the Appleton Oak. I'm Mason Quinn. Folks, today we are taking a look at 2002's Catch Me If You Can. Mm. This one is loaded. It's got Leo, Tom Hanks, and directed by Steven Spielberg. Woo. I have not seen this one, but I'm expecting big things out of this. I got a feeling it's going to be awesome. 2002, wow. I mean, I, I remember hearing about it when it first came out, but I have not seen it first time watch for this guy, but I am ready, willing, and able to watch this one. I know nothing about this movie at all. I don't ever recall even hearing about it. <laughs> you know, and I said, We're what? Wait a minute, what are we watching? And I'm like, doing the backdrop. Wait, wait hey, Tom Hanks, you Leo. <laughs> it's got to be good. So I'm, I'm excited. I have no right. idea what it's about or, or anything at all. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, without further ado, then, let's go! Have you ever Googled yourself and were shocked to see your personal information exposed on one of those public listing sites? Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocalls, spammers, and others who want to learn about you, like where you live. Private information shall remain private. This is why I'm pumped to tell you about our new sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle it for you. You can try Aura free for two weeks using our link, aura.com slash badmedicine. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything all at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. Once again, start your two-week free trial by using our link and going to Aura.com slash badmedicine. The link is also in the pinned comment and description, so check it out. Inspired by a true story. Thank you very much, and welcome to To Tell the Truth. My name is Frank William Abagnale. My name is Frank William Abagnale. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Frank William Abagnale. Hey, he looks familiar. And I flew over two million miles for free. I was also the chief <laughs> resident pediatrician at a Georgia hospital. I had cashed almost $4 oh, million dollars in fraudulent checks, and I did it all before my 19th birthday. Wow. At 18, he did all this? With all your talent, why didn't you go in for a legitimate profession? When I was a young man, I needed the money, and I thought this list of careers was the easiest way to get it. Who was it that finally caught you? His name was Carl Hanratty. Oh, 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 I see ready. <laughs> the FBI from the United States of America. <laughs> you sit here. You do not open the door. Oh. Tradition shall be granted in respect of offenses punishable in the laws of deprivation of liberty. And you don't think I should think fool me, do you? 16 pages to go. Stay with me. Article 2. 16 pages. Which is punishable under the laws of requesting by deprivation of liberty. Give me a doctor in here. I need a doctor. This man has to be on a plane for America. He has to see a doctor. If he dies, I'm holding you responsible. Oh. Oops. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just vomit over there? Oh, they're just walking behind him. I thought maybe the illness was a work. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought too. Oh. <laughs> okay, Carl. Let's go home. The New Rochelle Rotary Club has a history that goes back to 1919. We've only seen a handful of deserving gentlemen inducted in as lifetime members. Frank William Avignale. <laughs> so what <laughs> what's Leo doing? <laughs> okay, so he's the real Frank William Avignale. I stand here humbled by the presence of Mayor Robert Wagner. His voice. Every God, time. Just... Our club president, Jack Barnes, 
Oh, cigarettes. First of all, I'm honored to see my loving wife and my son, Frank Jr. Ah, uh, Jr. So his name is Frank. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. <laughs> the first mouse quickly gave up and drowned. <laughs> the second mouse wouldn't quit. Eventually, he churned that cream into butter and crawled out. I am that second mouse. <laughs> You're a better dancer than your father, Frankie. Show him the dance you were doing when we met. People in that little French village were so happy to see Americans. Happy. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> and the men are literally holding their breath. And I turned to my buddies and I said, I will not leave France without her. And I didn't. Oh, Whoa. Sh oh shit. Oh, shit, the rug. Can't believe I... No, no, it's nothing. It's nothing. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, get a towel. <laughs> <laughs> Steps right on it. Yeah, look at that. He's got the moves. Milk. Whenever I dance for you, I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. Come on, let's go. Get up. Come on, come on. You don't have to go to school today. It's okay. We have a very important meeting in the city. A bit of a fix. I need a suit for my kids, my son, Frank. I'm sorry. We don't loan suits, and we're not open. Darcy, is this yours? It must have slipped right off your neck. <laughs> what a con man. <laughs> so are we starting to get vibes that the dad was a con man? Uh, it's the feel, feeling I'm getting. When I get inside, you go back to the front seat and wait. The manager is about to open the door for your father. We don't usually loan money to people who have unresolved business with the IRS. I just need you guys to help me weather the storm. I know I made a mistake, I admit that, but these people want blood, they want my store. It's not a question of winning and losing, it's a question of risk. Let's return the suit. <laughs> oh no, oh, losing everything. It's small, but you know, it's going to be a lot less work. Oh, I always, they always put the, the, the number and the letter on the door just to mm -hmm. make it feel a little more New York y. Yep. On my son's 16th birthday, we're not going to eat pancakes. I don't think you. I opened the checking account. I put $25 in the account so you can buy whatever you want. It's 50 checks there, Frank. It's even got my name there, huh? Come on. Here, I thought you made that up. No, I'm <laughs> I'm not, just kidding. I know damn well he didn't. Me, Dad. It's just a school. Do you know what room 17 French is? Yeah. Uh, you see all the encyclopedias? Yeah, it looks like a substitute teacher. <laughs> oh, come on. This, is, oh, where it this is where it starts. <laughs> Quiet down, people. That's Abignail, <laughs> not Abignali. Well, somebody please tell me where you left off in your textbooks. If I need to ask again, I'm gonna write up the entire class. Take your seats! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, what's your name? Brad. Brad, why don't you get up here? <laughs> <laughs> Les Francais son uh, generale meant to Le Monde, a uh, oh. set impression. They sent for me. I always sub for Roberto. I'll never come back to, to Bellarmine <laughs> Jefferson again. <laughs> this is not a question of your son's attendance. Frank has been teaching Mrs. Glass's French class. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Glasser has been ill, and there was some confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Your son held a teacher parent yesterday. <laughs> I have a note to miss fifth and sixth period today. Doctor's appointment. Oh, one moment. No, it's a fake, right? You should fold it. <laughs> My dad would have did the same thing. Oh, you remember that girl Joanna I was telling you about? Yeah, I asked her out today. Ma, is this my driver's license? That's all there is, two bedrooms. You remember Dad's friend, Chuck Barnes, from the club? Oh, oh boy. boy. I'll see you later, huh? Wait, is this yours? Well, thanks, Frank. Uh, that's the president's pin. I'd be in deep trouble if I lost that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Scummy. 
He thinks we should get a lawyer and sue the government. You're not going to tell him, are you? Oh, Ugh. gross. That's right. Get There's that nothing kid to involved. Tell. Do you need some money, Frankie? Here, take five dollars. Buying off her son. Mom, mom. Oh boy. Hey, hey, hey. You stay away from me, you hear me? Frank, calm down, will you? I'm Dick Kesmer. Follow me into the next room, okay? They're all waiting for you. So what we need to do is make some decisions. Many times these decisions are left up to the courts, but that can be very expensive, Frank, people fighting over their children. Ooh. You remember your grandma? Eve, she arrived this morning. What she must you thought it. See, beauty. Do you understand what we're saying to you, Frank? Your father and I are getting a divorce. This is important because it states who you are going to live with after the divorce. I want to see a name on that line. What ticket to Grand Central, please? That'll be three dollars and fifty cents, sir. I've cut that. Right. Jesus. Carl, when do I get to call my father? You can call him when we get to New York. No, Carl, on the other side of the hotel, they got suites that face the park. It's the best room the FBI can find. <laughs> No, but listen, I'm telling you, the bank, they made the mistake. Where am I gonna go? That damn kid, go home. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're not allowed to cash checks from other banks. You know what I found on the sidewalk out there? Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Must have slipped right off your neck. Oh! Yeah. Well, you see, it's my grandmother's birthday next week. <laughs> Please, it's just five dollars. Dode would have to know. We are not allowed to take checks from people we don't know. Uh, he's persistent. Yeah, I'll give him that. Mm -hmm. Every bank in town. <laughs> oh, it's back when pilots were basically rock stars. Yeah. You gonna be a pilot? Right, yeah. I have decided to become an airline pilot. How's mom? Have you called her lately? Love your son, Frank. I'm Frank Black from Monroe High School and I have an appointment with Mr. Morgan. What does it mean when one pilot says to another pilot, what kind of equipment are you on? I just wanna know what kind of aircraft you're flying. Is it a DC-8, 707, Constellation? Do you think I can make a copy of this to put into my article? <laughs> no, Frank. You can have that when it's three years expired. Oh, thanks. And what about your ID badge? Do you have an extra one I could borrow? <laughs> <laughs> the only way to get one of those is become a real live pilot for Pan American Airways. Hey, hello, I'm calling about a uniform. I sent my uniform to be cleaned through the hotel, and I, I guess they must have lost it. They lost a uniform. Happens all the time. You look too young to be a pilot. I'm a co-pilot. It's going to be $164. You'll have to fill in your employee ID number, and then I'll bill Pan Am. I'll take it out in your next paycheck. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry I ran away, but you don't have to worry. I promise. I'm going to get it all back. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a real life pilot? I uh, sure am, little lady. What's your name? Do they really used to look at like, yeah. airline pilots? The like total this? rock stars. Oh, really? Yeah. That's 50, 70. You have yourself a great time in Paris. Thank you. Oh, always do. I'm John Modica. I manage this branch. Doesn't even recognize them. Nope. Have you stayed with us before? Uh, no, I've been primarily based on the West Coast. I was also wondering if I could uh, write you a personal check. For airline personnel, we cash personal checks up to $100. Payroll checks, we cash up to $300. Dear Dad, I've decided to become a pilot for Pan American Airways. Love, your son, Frank. <laughs> Security's a little bit different now on uh, checks. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> I have a payroll check here I'd like to cash. Certainly. Uh, excuse me. I'm sure you hear this all the time, but you have the most beautiful eyes I have ever seen. <laughs> I do get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> First thing with that $300, buy a bunch of mini ship uh, planes yep. for the Pan Am. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. We won't have any cash until the bank's open in an hour. I'm sure they can cash your check at the airport. Well, the airline, sir. 
They've always taken care of their own. <laughs> Is this where he learns he can fly all over the world? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Are you deadheading? Yes, yes. Hey. Yeah, I'm a deadhead. You're a little late, but the jump seat is open. Are you my deadhead? <laughs> hey, great. <laughs> what kind of equipment are you on? DC-8? Uh, 707. Would you like a drink after takeoff? Milk. <laughs> <laughs> God, you almost blew it! <laughs> Milk? See that cherry set in? It had like this much foam awesome. on it. <laughs> Look at him. You're up. I am now a co-pilot earning fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Hello, Deadhead. Hello. Enjoying your free ride? Marcy, did you drop this? Oh boy. No. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you stopping? I want to tell you something, Marcy. This is by far the best date. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing in some honest Dave's in there. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Miami Mutual Bank. Hey, oh, Elizabeth, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'd like to cash this check here, and then I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. Oh! <laughs> 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 Her laugh. Her <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and then we feed the checks into the Micker machine, which uses special ink to encode the account numbers on the bottom of the checks. Oh, he's learning everything. What he's doing is he's opening checking accounts at various banks. The East Coast branches are numbered zero one. You mean those numbers on the bottom of a check actually mean something? All of this was in the report I filed two days ago. You want to talk to my wife. She's the one who balances the checkbook at our house. <laughs> <laughs> my son, the bird man. Some uniform thing. Okay. Those are the keys to a 1965 Cadillac DeVille convertible. That she's, she's parked downstairs with done eating lunch one evening. Do you know what would happen if the IRS found out? I took the train here, Frank. I'm taking the train home. Uh, uh, I didn't think about that one. No. She's so stubborn. Your mother, don't worry. I'm not gonna let her go without a fight. I'm fighting for us since the day we met. You're the best damn pilot in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> It's not what you think. I'm just a co-pilot. Where are you going, Frank? Los Angeles. Hollywood. The rest of us really are suckers. Does Dad know he's running a con? Was that what that was? Uh, uh, I kind of feel like his dad knew. You can be so serious all the time. Does it bother you, Mr. Anders? Oh, would you like to hear me tell a joke? Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Go f*** yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I just like the little turn and smirk before he says it. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want any trouble. We'll just take this check and be on our way. Thank you. Good. Because I don't want my customers harassed. Mm. Where else have we seen that guy? 201. Thank you. Corner here. Oh, that's a dad in Tokyo Drift? Yeah. I got one. Is that Frank? Yeah, it's Frank. Hey, Frank, how are you? How's the knee? Oh, here's the music from the intro. Yep. <laughs> Easy with the finger <laughs> on the trigger, buddy. What? <laughs> That's right at her. Jesus Christ. Oh. Hands on your head. Well, that's the new IBM Selectric. Put your hands on your head. Print type in five seconds. Shut up. Pop out the ball. Drop it. Relax. You're late. Your boy just tried to jump out the window. My partner has him in custody. I don't know what you're talking about. You see some credentials. Yeah, sure. You want my gun too? Come over here, take my gun. Just do me a favor, take a look outside. Look, my partner's walking into the car as we speak. Look. Oh, nice. Call the LAPD again. I don't want people walking through my crime scene. I didn't expect <laughs> the Secret Service on this. Five minutes earlier, you would have landed yourself a pretty good collar. Mind if I come downstairs with you? I, I gotta take a look at this guy. Do me a favor and sit tight for a second while I get this evidence downstairs. Wait. Your wallet. <laughs> you hang on to it for a minute. Oh, Holy that was shit. Oh, <sighs> tension there. Oh, he's gonna, oh, when he realizes it's, what happened. Oh, he's gonna be mad. <laughs> 
How long is it going to take him? He's starting to realize it right now. (laughs) 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 All the labels, like... Why is he? Yeah, the, he did that when he was he, younger too. He took the label off the uh, wine soda bottle or, or wine soda. Bottle, or beer yeah. Bottle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh, God damn it! <laughs> 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 what happened to me, Bars? <laughs> <laughs> this could be almost anybody. I heard his voice, John. I saw his face. Just be careful. You got 12 years in. That's the kind of thing that can make you section chief someday. Just don't put yourself in this type of position. Position of being humiliated. (laughs) Sean, would you like to hear me tell a joke? (laughs) (laughs) He's flying around the country posing as a Pan Am pilot. There's a column about him in the paper. And I keep telling him this is not my problem. This guy doesn't even fly Pan Am. Mm. Call him the James Bond of the sky. Did you say Bond? James Bond. Yes! Oh, you know, I've never <laughs> seen one of the old Connery oh, and James Bonds. We'll have to get there someday. Maybe. Now what you need is one of those little foreign sports cars that he drives. <laughs> Come, Come on! He's got the Aston. Haven't I seen you before? Maybe. You're that model, right? Cheryl. Think I could get an autograph? <laughs> Do you have a pen in your room? <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> Showing how how different their lives are. <laughs> I would say so. How much did these cards cost? Oh, Fifty-five cents, I think. And if they sold me downstairs at the hotel gift shop, how much would you pay me for the entire night? I didn't think it was oh. that kind of an arrangement. I don't think he did either. Uh, no. Uh, five hundred dollars. Six hundred. No, shit in the head. Thousand dollars. You think this hotel is gonna cash a thousand dollar check at three a.m.? It's a New York savings and loan check. It's like gold. They'll cash it. See, this check is for fourteen hundred. We agreed upon a thousand. Why don't I give you back four hundred and you give me that check? You just got four hundred dollars in real money. Yep. Gave her a bad check. Check he can just. Is this guy a, uh, a Nigerian <laughs> prince as well? <laughs> oh no, the worst! Uh, don't embarrass well, yourself. I yeah, thought maybe. Sure. Does this belong to anybody? <laughs> Ruined all yeah. his shirts. I thought maybe it was something from his wallet. I'm trying to track you down now for the last couple of hours. I wanted to apologize for what happened out in Los Angeles. You want to talk to me? Let's talk face to face. My my suite at the Stuyvesant Arms, room 3113. I'm really sorry if I made a fool out of you. No, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't call just to apologize, did you? You have no one else to call. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be a lonely life constantly on the run. Morning night. Hmm. He was. He was there. One, one, three. More coffee, sir. Yeah. Worked Are you at a Gus, Gus Springs restaurant. Captains of the Cosmic Ray, the Big Freeze, Land of the Golden Giants. They've got them all. Barry Allen. <laughs> you should have known that. Oh, I know. Oh, sure he did. Yeah, the comic book. When he's I, didn't Flash. Even, I, didn't even, Barry Allen. I didn't even catch on to it. I didn't at all. Not until he said it. And when he was sleeping in his room, he yeah, had a he had flash, flash comic, comic. I, right I, on I his saw bed. that, but yeah. Right on his nice hand. Our unsub is a kid. That's why we couldn't match his prints. That's why he doesn't have a record. Why New York? The Yankees. <sighs> so where are we on the list? Number 53, Abignali. I hope you all happy. I put out the Sara <laughs> <laughs> Put out the cake. <laughs> My husband, Jack, is uh, Oh. What about your first husband, Mrs. Abagnale? Would you happen to have a picture of your son? Oh, yes. I have his whole yearbook. Oh. Our unsub's name is Frank Abagnale, Jr., age 17. Ma'am, I'm sorry to have to tell you your son is fudging checks. Just tell me how much he owes and I'll pay you back. <laughs> so far, it's about $1.3 million. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <In the head. laughs> We'll have to find in out that what one time point, frame. That's we'll huge. Have to figure out one point three mil is in uh, nineteen sixty four. Why would to be labeled in these months? Do you understand how dangerous this is? Do you, Doctor Blair? Doctor Blair. 
Dr. Sherwood is there. <laughs> he told me to pick up the blood, so I did. But he never told me to lay with it. <laughs> What's your name? Amy, Amy oh, Adams. Yeah. These doctors, you know, they don't know everything. It's my first week. I bet you're good at your job. If I asked you to check on the status of my friend Lance Applebaum, that you could do that for me in a second. Oh, he is smooth. Mr. Applebaum fractured his ankle. This is the emergency chart. See that blue star there? That means that the oh. patient has been diagnosed. And then after he's been treated, we put a red circle here. Do you know if they're hiring here at the hospital? I've decided to get off the road for a while, taken a night job at a hospital, and met some really nice people. Who knows? Come we'll even find on. someone to settle down with. Just like that. Harvard Medical School? <laughs> <laughs> In the past, they've always let me choose my own nurses. Dr. <laughs> Connolly? <laughs> 30 milligrams of codeine every four hours. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Was he just going to... Oh, my God. Hello, Brenda. Hi, Dr. Connors. You need to sign me? Thank you. Oh, she's trying to show her teeth. Oh. Wow. Whoa! <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Not sure that's uh, appropriate oh, at work. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> was, I, was, I was waiting for the chair to fly over. <laughs> Shouldn't you go? No. What if he's in surgery? Do you really think I have to go? Oh, when you have Dr. Connors. Oh no, oh, boy. No. <laughs> oh. What? Uh, what seems to be the problem? Bicycle accident. Take an X-ray, then stitch him out and put him in a walking cast. You don't seem to have much need for me. Carry on. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. <sighs> Still got the old wedding picture up. Frank Abagnale Sr. Looking for your son. He's in trouble. Do you know where he is? Frank made up a fake ID and enlisted uh, in the Marine Corps. He's over in Vietnam right now, crawling through the uh, damn jungle, fighting the communists. If you'd like to give me a call and talk, here's my number. He knows the dad's in on it. Yeah. Mm. Not a oh. father, are you? If you were a father, you'd know. I would never give up my son. I'm so sorry, Frank. I can't. Just... I had an abortion two years ago. And then when I got better, they kicked me out of the house. Oh, still being mad at me. No, no. My dad is a lawyer. What if you were engaged to a doctor? <sighs> oh. What if I went to your parents and I asked permission to marry you? <laughs> this, this guy this guy with his finger yeah. on the trigger other guys they're all, they're all doing it it's empty nobody here <laughs> <laughs> he has it hanging up at his house was it there was a kid in the news like wasn't it like seven or eight years ago who pretended to be a doctor for a while call me frank frank would you like to say grace Two little mice <laughs> fell into a bucket of cream. <laughs> he eventually churned that cream into butter, and he walked out. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest, I'm thinking about getting back into law. <laughs> Another one. Are you a doctor or a lawyer? Before I went to medical school, I passed the bar in California. You just full of surprises. <laughs> sure is. And before that, I was a pilot. Yep. Where did you go to law school? Uh, Berkeley. <gasps> Berkeley, Berkeley. Oh my gosh, isn't that where you went, Daddy? Was that Snake Hollingsworth still teaching there when you went through Berkeley? Grumpy old Hollingsworth, right? I tell you, meaner than ever. And that dog of his? Oh, is this a test? Tell me, Frank, what was the name of his little dog? Oh, he's getting busted out here. The dog was dead. Oh. How unfortunate. Oh, what a save. He was, uh, he was about five seconds away from running out of the house. Yeah. Oh, boy. Not too late. Oh, it's getting good now. <laughs> <laughs> He's carrying <laughs> the diploma. 
doctor, a lawyer, a Lutheran. So what are you, Frank? Tell me the truth, Frank. What is a man like you doing with Brenda? Oh. I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm, I'm nothing, really. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm just a kid who's in love with your daughter. Okay. No. You're a romantic. Men like us are nothing without the women we love. Ask the question you came here to ask me. Just keeps working yeah. out for him. Yep. Right through that door. Good luck, Mr. Connors. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess he has to be Mr. Connors. That's what he told yep. Brenda. I let you cheat in the bar exam in Louisiana. Then we have that at Claren, I'll tell you. I'm going to figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the chewing. <laughs> Thank you, it's not sir. green, Welcome but... Aboard. Same desk no. lamp. Oh, no, it's such a <laughs> TV. <laughs> Do you concur? <laughs> it's a photograph of Prentice York. This is a photograph of the defendant's signature on a cancel check. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is irrefutable evidence that the defendant is, in fact, lying. <laughs> I don't see anybody in the court. This is a preliminary hearing. Son, <laughs> what in the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> As studio guests for the sing along tonight. I think he's planning his next exit pretty quick. I don't know. Just one look at you. I don't know. I think he's seen how happy they are, and I think he uh, wants that. No. No, unless, I'm, unless I'm getting sucked into his con, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah. you are. Maybe you are. He's well, because look well, at the way for, he's looking. But for him too, it reminds think, him of how his parents were back. Yeah, in the day. I think that's yeah, what it was more be. than anything. He wishes his parents were still like that. Yeah. I took a job. Got my job. Do you have a good lawyer? I sort of am a lawyer now. <laughs> I had to deal with them. Two penalties. I'm gonna sue them. They're trying to scare me, intimidate me. I'll make them chase me for the rest of their lives. Jesus, Dad, oh. just... It's an invitation to an engagement party. Daddy, I'm getting married. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh, he's oh. not excited. Has Ma seen you dress like this? She came to pick up some boxes. That's okay, you know why? Because she, she's going to the wedding with us. Jesus, he doesn't know Mom's remarried and everything. Yeah. Mother's married now to my friend Jack Barnes. They have a house in Long Island. I'm gonna stop now. They're never gonna catch you, Frank. Why won't you sit down? Come Why on. would she do sit that down. to you? Sit with me, have a drink. I'm your father. He's gonna need to stop. It's already too late. Yep. You can't stop. Where you going? Where you going tonight? Someplace exotic? Where you going tonight? God, Dad's just delusional. Yeah, well, he's just living what the life he wanted through Frank. It's all his stories. Merry Christmas. What do you want? I want it to be over. You've stolen almost $5 million. <laughs> 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 you're scared because I'm getting close. I know you. Stop chasing me. I can't stop. Oh. It's my job. I just thought I'd ask, you know. What are we looking for? Engagement announcements. Name of Connors. Come on, Carl. The kid would have changed his name by now. She thinks he's Connors. If he loses a name, he loses a girl. Like ah, well, there's another yeah. label. Ready. Oh. Handwriting with the FBI. Handwriting with it, sir. All right, Roger. How are you? Hi, Ben. Oh, no. What can I do for you? It's not too much trouble. I'd like to meet the groom. What did you do? What's wrong? I mean, you'd love me whether I was sick or whether I was poor, even if I had a different name. <laughs> oh! Where'd you get all that money? I'm not a doctor. I never went to medical school. You're not a loose friend? <laughs> hang up! <laughs> do you trust me? Do you, do you love me, Brenda? You love me. <laughs> oh, this boy. This such a mess. In two days, you're going to meet me at Miami International Airport. You give the taxi driver this money right here, and you tell him to drive all through the night. Is this actually going to work? Well... I guess why would I be they, surprised? They, they didn't they didn't catch him here, remember? Nope. Hey, two days I'll be there no matter what at 10 a.m. Before you go, please tell me your name. Frank. William Abagnale Jr. 
<laughs> it's like the feather in Forrest Gump. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, he's got an old Chevelle. Pulled it off. Oh, is he going to watch it to make sure she doesn't yeah. have a tail? Oh, what yeah, was that? That guy was yep. talking into her ear. Yep, he saw it. They're all there for him. You got to run, dude. You got to run. <laughs> Just tightening bolts. <laughs> uh. This guy's a no show. He must have gotten wise. He was tipped. He's not here today. It'll be tomorrow. We get him before he leaves the country. He doesn't have a passport. The last six months, he's going to have it in Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is uh, Frank Roberts. Pan Am will be initiating a new recruiting program this year. Thank you all very much for coming. Now, these eight young ladies will accompany me on a two-month public relations tour through Europe. Well, if he walks in there with four girls on each arm, nobody's going to suspect it's him looking like a pilot. Deborah Cho McMillan. Now, did he want the ones that were, like, given the worst answers, yeah, you'd think? So the easiest, easiest to manipulate? If you can use <laughs> some exotic... Oh, <laughs> Right he's into thinking, the lion's den. He's yeah. thinking they won't suspect anything. Nope, they're not going to be paying attention. Yep, he's, they're drawing all the attention. Let's take Nobody even knows he's there. Nope. He might as well be invisible. I got to know how much of this is true. I'm going to be hooked. Uh, I got to be watching documentaries. <laughs> this is fascinating. There's a guy in a Pan Am uniform sitting in a white coat de villa. Can you get a look at his face? He's got his pilot's cap. Oh, I think it's him. I'm just a driver. A man paid me $100 to wear this uniform, picks on up the uh, airport. Who are you picking up? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Right in his face! <laughs> I love it. Wow. I got, uh, uh, South America. Australia. Nobody was called, sir. The banks didn't know what was happening till last week. Madrid a week ago. My guess is he's still there. We have to leave now, sir, today. I'm sorry, Carl. If you couldn't catch him here, you're not going to catch him there. But, sir, we're going to let him get away. No, Carl. You let him get away. Oh. oh. Not we. You. Color separation is flawless. Where do they do printing like this? Germany, Great Britain, France. France! France. Oh, Christmas Eve. He's got a... It's got a theme call, going here. It's got a call these Thomas guys being, uh, where are you going to be for Christmas Eve? Well, I got to be in France chasing down a. What, <laughs> well, how old is he at this point? 20? Eight, well, 18. Is he still. Oh, it was seven not, months later and he was. Oh, it so was 19 eight, or 20. Yeah. Yeah. 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Either way. Still. God, what a legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Put your show down, Frank. You're under arrest. I'm going to take a look out the front door. No, no. I told him I'd walk out first and give a signal. Here, you can put these on yourself. Oh, I can't do that. I don't think there's anyone else out there. You're going to have to catch me yourself. We don't have time for this. Tell me what you want me to see, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you lied about that. You asked me if I had a family. I did, but I don't anymore. No, no, no. There's no problem. We're coming out right now. You pay some hotel desk clerk to make that call for you? Is that what you did? You're going to have to catch me. Frank, Frank, don't make a mistake. You push until you make it true. You. you walk out that door, they're going to kill you. You have any children, Carl? I have a four-year-old daughter. You swear on your daughter? You swear? There's not going to oh, be no. anybody else. Did he so. get him? He probably doesn't have a four-year-old daughter either. That was really good, Carl. Oh, I guess I did. I did. Where are you taking you? I'm, I'm supposed to go. Let me in the car. Let me in the car. <laughs> car. Let me in the car. <laughs> Don't worry, Frank. I'll have the extradited back to the United States. Don't worry. Just gonna find out how he passed the bar in Louisiana. <laughs> you have to remember to let me call my father when we land. That's LaGuardia right there. Runway 44. Frank, your father is dead. 
I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. He fell down some steps at Grand Central Station trying to catch a train. Carl, who are you, you to say something like that, huh? I'm really sorry. God damn it! Carl, I'm gonna be sick! Frank! Come on! Frank! Frank! <laughs> 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 Jack Frost <laughs> He ran, <laughs> ran away. They've got to be there waiting for him. Oh, oh. Tiny tots. Where's your mommy? Loaded lots of toys. Oh, Jesus. Yep. He's got a little sister. Yep. And here they go. I don't I, know if he wanted to really, yeah, really get caught. I think he was done. <laughs> That's why he climbed out of the bathroom in the air. Well, he wanted to see his mom. Sorry, wrong house. We thought the wet bandits were in there. I was there. just going to say <laughs> the wet bandits. I have no choice but to ignore your request to be treated as a minor. under 18 the whole time. And sentence you to 12 years in Atlanta's maximum security prison for the entirety oh, of that sentence. be out in his 20s, though. Yeah, but isolation and maximum security well, i think he no was picnic. i think he might have been 18 so 30 and yeah, the, the but crimes, that's if it's you know the 1212 so. right and if they don't let him out early or whatever good uh good behavior which he's in which is solitary so so. i gotta know how i've never seen anything like this in my whole life i gotta know how much of this is real <laughs> how's your daughter grace I don't know. She lives with her mother in Chicago. I don't get to see her much. What's in the briefcase? I'm on my way to the airport. It's a paper hanger. He's working his way through Minnesota. You got any of the checks? Yeah, yeah. I got a, a counterfeit he drew on. Oh, I see. It, it, it's definitely a teller, Carl. They get used over and over again, so you always get worn out. Here's your guy. Hire this man. Would you be interested in working with the FBI's financial crimes unit? I already got a job here. You know, I uh, deliver the mail. <laughs> We have the power to take you out of prison. You'd be placed in the custody of the FBI where you'd serve out the remainder of your sentence as an employee of the federal government. Under whose custody? <laughs> I'm Frank Abagnale. I'm supposed to start work here today. <laughs> <laughs> All the guys that tried to catch him. How long do I have to work here? Every day, Frank, till we let you go. Oh, it's loading them up. <laughs> uh, don't do it. American Airlines 355. <laughs> no way is he doing Get it again. The, come on. Try to run here in the States. We'll send you back to Atlanta for 50 years. You're just a kid. I'm not your kid. You said you were going to Chicago. My daughter can't see me this weekend. She's going skiing. Now she's 15. My wife's been remarried for 11 years. Sometimes it's easier living the lie. I'm going to let you fly tonight, Frank. Because I know you'll be back on Monday. Nobody's chasing you. Ooh, somebody's, oh, oh, somebody's late. It's like the original amount was for $60. Mind if I take a look? Nah, I came back. How did you do it, Frank? How did you cheat on the bar exam? <laughs> <laughs> I studied for two weeks and I passed. Is that the truth for <laughs> Let this guy skills checks out of mailboxes. You know, Carl, I think this guy's pretty smart. I guess all we have to do now is catch him. <laughs> right, Chris Frank, too? Yeah, but now if you still <laughs> Just started off as a 17 year old kid. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so of course they do. Ah, oh, they remain close friends this uh, day. Fun movie. Oh man, this what you said it. Answer this one was fun. And uh, look, I think we all might find ourselves a little, a little guilty now and then of 
sometimes rooting for the bad guy just a little bit, assuming he's not an overly <laughs> not terrible say, yeah. bad not guy. Check fraud him. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, we've all been there, right? We've all been there, right? We've yeah, all we're, uh, we're on camera. Come up a little <laughs> short. You know? We're on camera. No, but <laughs> in all seriousness, um, so I used to love the show. Uh, I don't think they still make new episodes. I used to love the show. I almost got away with it, not because of you're necessarily rooting for the bad guy, but you're so interested in seeing how they did it. And some of the criminals are smarter than others. Some <laughs> of them, like, they break out of prison. They don't have a plan. They're caught five minutes later. Other guys will be on the run for 30 years, and then they never catch them. But uh, there was a story recently of a guy, uh, not recently, but there's a story of a guy that this reminded me of where he did the same type of thing. Like he went around and he just BS'd his way with all these companies, all these government officials. He got the key to, I think, San Francisco or some city in California. And it was, it was all a con. He ended up being a priest and that was where they eventually caught him. He was trying to lay low in New Mexico. But anyways, all that being said, what I'm getting at is that this was a lot of fun. And what I liked was it showed how this could all be done if you're the first guy to do it. You know, you don't put a lock on the door until somebody breaks in. You don't have security measures until somebody tries mm -hmm. to get what you're after. So he was Frank was able to do all this different stuff, and obviously he's a brilliant guy, but he was able to do all this stuff because all the safety measures, some of which he helped put in place eventually, uh, weren't there, and he was able to do this. And We've talked about it how many times in this channel, guys, where, hey, you want to get into a building? Put on an orange vest and carry a ladder and a toolbox. You'll be in. Nobody will say nothing. Go walk right in. Do whatever you want to do. And you hear every year about, you know, people crashing the Super Bowl. There's there's ways to get in. And I think it just it, uh, people who are sometimes in those positions of security or checking on things, you know, you get lackadaisical or a little bit lazy in their job. They're checking badges all day. You know, eventually somebody's going to slip through. And gosh, I've, I took so many notes on this just from the story standpoint, I'll get into the, you know, the cast and crew later, but from a story standpoint, just so much fun. It's, it's always interesting to see how the con is done, what eventually happens to them and, and how they get caught in all the different ways that Frank did. This was, was just incredible. I'm right there with you. Oak. I'm going to go on Google and try to find out as, as much as I can about this, because these stories are just so fascinating to me. I, I don't know why I just, yeah. I just think it's great. Um, a little, if I could just give a little shout out to, uh, Elizabeth Banks in here. Yeah. I, her role I thought was great because <laughs> we had obviously seen her in all the Pitch Perfect movies mm -hmm. and the role she played even for those couple of minutes uh, somebody had to know she was going to be a star right from there so that was great obviously Leo and, and Tom Crush doing difficult accents I'll, I'll even throw that in there they did great Spielberg obviously you expect the best out of him and this one was just so much fun uh, again, I took a bunch of notes, but I, I want these guys to get in their two cents because it was a blast. Just all the different cons was just so amazing. Yeah, just I wanted I wish it would have had a little bit more of the to tell me a lie. And I want to know if that was real, that game show where he was oh. on there because <laughs> I thought that was pretty clever how they did that. How they have three guys as pilots, you know, and they give that away. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, just the. I mean, you look at it nowadays like how could someone forge something? But then you look at back in the '60s, and you know that might have been easily yeah. possible. Yeah, you first know, first checks he had were just sheets of paper that he just yeah, he ju and he just did the Pan Am you know sticker off of a off of a you know toy plane. It was able to put it on there and cash the checks for you know they said well upwards of three hundred dollars, and you know, I mean. Three hundred dollars. It's not like it's not that much money nowadays. I mean, that's still a good amount of money now. So back in the early early to mid sixties, I mean, that's that's a good amount of money. And then he, you know, he was doing it countless times. Well, then it turned into one point three million, and then four million overall. Yeah. And you saw at the end when he finally was caught, caught that he had these big presses and brands. And you saw the, <laughs> like he had the stacks. The conversion he had uh, stacks. He had yeah, yeah like, look at like 64 or whatever yeah. when he was yeah, caught. Like quad graphics in there. He's oh, just, yeah, printing just printing it up. And he's just sitting there, <laughs> you know, break, doing all of them. And so this was the, and then the fun part was the cat and mouse. And yeah. then obviously how they became, you know, good friends because I think they do have that. They do appreciate each other when they're, because I think we've seen that with some, 
people that have tried to escape the law, they become somewhat kind of close with their cap tour. So like them playing that cat and mouse game and trying to stay ahead of the other, they, they look at it as like chess or yeah. something like that. I always so, go back to uh, Heat with Al Pacino and yeah, Robert De Niro. That great so scene. like yeah. that's how that immediately is. And so it just, uh, it's, it's awesome. And uh, this was great in how they did all of this and just – just kept on going, like going from New York to Atlanta to New Orleans. I mean, then he, they found him in Miami that, uh, you know, he was a pilot, a doctor, then a lawyer. He actually passed the bar, according to the movie, <laughs> which was great. I mean, at first and it first started out with him just being a substitute French teacher, which was amazing. And then how he was a Skyway man. And he loved it because then he was the James Bond of the sky. And he just he just couldn't stop. So, I mean. This was so entertaining, so much fun to watch, and just great. And like I said, it, it kind of reminds me of the show White Collar. If you've seen that show, it, it's the same premise. He's like a he's an art thief and all this other stuff, and he goes to federal prison, and so then he gets taken by the FBI to help them out with art thieves and so on and so forth, and becomes friends with his main captor and everything like that. So it basically, like, I'm I don't know if it is or not but maybe that show could have been inspired in some way by this show so i mean that's maybe why i love this so much too because i love that show so much so this was a lot of fun to watch and uh what was that conversion oak about 34 and a half million oh! <laughs> what he got. i put 1969 so just look i just googled it so of course i, I can't speak to whether it's super accurate yeah, yeah. i did see a few separate google um results that say four million in 1969 i just put that um, cause that's what the time he got, um, picked up in France. Pinched. Um, yeah, it'd be about, uh, 34 and a half million <laughs> today. So not a small amount of money to, um, to take. Um, <laughs> uh, this movie was so much fun mm -hmm. and, um, uh, answer was going through some of the Wikipedia information. There was some inaccuracies as far as he had a little bit more family. The mom never remarried. After he ran away, he didn't see his father again. Mm. But other than that, it sounds like most of it was pretty spot on. He said he escaped through the um, the uh, kitchen galley on the plane and not okay. the bathroom. But <laughs> for the most part, is that it was pretty. pretty he was pretty spot on. Yeah. So. Uh, this is a wild story, but it's not, you know, it's not the first time. I think I was watching some hacker show something where it was the same thing where a guy got busted hacking and then the FBI is like, well, do you want to help us catch yeah. other people? And so, um, you know, it's the people who are committing the crimes are usually always going to, I shouldn't say usually always, I'm always going to be one step ahead of mm -hmm. the people who are, you know, putting, you know, um, you know processes in place to catch them yep. and so that's that's how it goes look if you're not, not going to know all about forging checks until somebody finds a new way to do it and then you have yep. to figure it out so the story itself you know answers what he said he watched a show that um, you know had yep. had similar storylines so it's a very fun story I think um, the personality of, of, of Frank of course and the, the incredible acting by Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks made this story as, as unique as it was um, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm going to guess the guy, you know, just got super addicted to the thrill of it all. Yeah. You know, it's like you needed that dopamine rush. I'm guessing every time he sat on a plane was like, oh, am I going to get caught? Yeah. Like, what a thrill, you know, going in and. Yeah, because yeah, that was what I wrote down is that Frank didn't seem motivated by the money. Necessarily. No, 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 I think he liked having the fancier things, yeah. but I think it was I think it was always it's almost like he got bored with it you know oh yeah I, I need a new challenge i need yeah. something so it went from pilot to doctor now i will say um as far as the pilot thing it seemed like they were catching up to him with that yeah. you know it was starting to be in the news so they were probably cracking down on stuff who knows maybe there was other people doing it at the same time that like he ruined it for everybody <laughs> you ruined it for us <laughs> uh, the doctor thing was wild you know it was interesting when we saw him you know how meticulous he was as far as forging stuff it's funny when i was uh 19 years old um my id the ids that we had you know it said your birth date um but you could switch the oh, letters careful now you could switch the letters this is the guy i ain't worrying about admitting to a crime in 1999 <laughs> the fbi is coming after me there was a guy who had a setup in his living room there right? was a guy there was this guy, guy. yeah 
Uh, his name starts with a J. We'll just leave it at that. I don't think the <laughs> FBI is coming after him. Um, but no, he had a mag. He, went to, he went to his house, right? I might have. I think I've told this story before. But he had a magnifying glass on his coffee table, and basically, you know, um, look, my Instagram is David Bay seventy nine. So it's not like people, or whatever the year I was born. But you could change a nine to a six pretty easy on an ID. So he had like a super fine exacto knife and a super fine marker. And he had the lamp on it, and we're sitting there like yeah. <laughs> a couple of teenagers changing their ID to say they were 21. But it was it was it kind of gave me flashbacks to that when he was cutting and doing that. I'm like, oh, yeah, me too, brother. You know, <laughs> it's a stash of limitations. Else, on that. I had somebody else do it. Yeah, I'm admitting to a, a 25 year old ID. Look, I got busted for having a fake ID. Somebody, somebody, oh. nar somebody narked on me two months before my 21st birthday. So the oh. law, the law oh. already knows about me the house always he, wins he the, law, the law the law, the law knows about me. but um it's it just a I, I don't even like know how to review this movie it's like they're the movie was done great the acting was done great the story is wild it's so it's like i mean is it a great movie because it's done well i mean is it a great movie because of the story it's kind of like all of the above and i think mm -hmm. it's really impressive that they took this wild story and they said you know what let's get some of the absolute best actors in hollywood to yep. deliver this story so of course leonardo dicaprio uh, tom hanks christopher walken i mean just yeah i mean he played the dad who was kind of the con man and it's like they made it very clear and whether this was true to real life you know that he wasn't just a guy who got behind on some taxes either. He, yeah, a little more to it. I, yeah, I gotta sue him. They, they, they keep coming after me. You know, yeah, they like, want the crumbs. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this, I've never even heard of this movie. Yeah, and it's such a, I mean, just such a wild ride, and and so much fun. Um, but um, looks like at the Academy Awards, um, uh, Christopher um, Walken was uh, nominated for Best Supporting Actor for this. Um, so he won some awards for this. Um, DiCaprio was nominated for a, a Golden Globe. I mean, uh, some yeah, some some, some awards for the films. Um, <laughs> it's I mean, you know what I found interesting, uh, just to, and this is to kind of talk about the movie as it was presented to us. Um, I don't want to speculate on what really happened or what the true story was, but what I found interesting when Frank was having that party. And he had a bunch of people there, you know, oh, probably didn't yeah. know him that well, but they're kind of messing stuff up a little mm -hmm. bit, spilling drinks or whatever. He was getting really irritated about it. And I don't know if that's because it's kind of like that idea of like you care about something when you earn it. And now granted, Frank didn't exactly earn mm -hmm. it, but he had to work for what he had, yeah. so to speak, versus people who were just in there having a good time. And he was genuinely irritated by people messing up his stuff. And I just wonder if that's because he went through what he did when he was younger. He came up poor and he had to build himself up however he did it. You know, obviously illegal, but still had to put in the work to do it, to build himself up. And I just wondered, like, if that stuck with him a little bit. Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like from what it looks like, he didn't necessarily come up poor. Looks like the you looked like yeah, he, if you look at the old house, it was, it was good. Good until and I'm 16. wondering, I, and I'm yeah. kind of just kind of a parallels, but just a little bit different path. Like imagine having it good, and then losing it, and then kind of getting it yeah. back again, and being like, okay, now I have a different appreciation. And being driven to get his parents back together, that's what started the whole thing. He just wanted his parents to be happy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's what he kept on saying. Like he kept yeah. on, oops, he it kept on trying to get. That, it was interesting that they, they get kept mom, going you know, back to that. And again, that's one of those things where I wonder. If that was, um, you know, if that was one of the things that actually, you know, happened, there's a, a picture of our guy <laughs> here, uh, whether that's a thing that uh, actually happened yeah. as far as him trying to get his parents back together, if it was just part of the story. But either way, I mean, this, this was phenomenally done and this is just a fun, fun, you know, it's like sometimes we watch some serious movies, sometimes we watch movies that have lessons in them, and it's like this was like, had a little bit of everything the Dead. chase, the really, comedy, the drama that's what Spielberg normally does, you know God, you know, his movies are always kind of like that, they're always a real kind of easy watch, but yet they make you think and they always have a little bit of everything, so man, this one was fun, I don't know what you mean, yeah. we got to get some scores, get some scores out here yeah Board over there. So 
over here. It's over. The health it is. It's over there I'm now. Directly behind Let's me. See, it was over here. It's right there in front of your effing face. Yeah, this is a quick score for me, folks. Oh, wow. I have five out of five answers. This, I, this was on the level of you know darn. I, I had so much fun to watch. Perfect movie, I think in telling this story like look everybody can have their tastes of different movies that they like and they think are perfect you know for some people it might be a harry potter or lord of the rings or a top gun maverick something like that shawshank but you know you to put a movie in in its own little box i guess you you know so to speak and to something that's gonna tell a true story a recreation that almost starts to feel like a documentary for me this was done perfect and, and i give it a five out of five i think there's so much rewatchability because leo and tom are amazing actors i think you can go back and maybe we, we would pick up on things that we maybe missed different ways that their characters acted little things that they did so uh, th this one's a five for me. Well, the fun part was, like, they talked about Barry Allen, and I immediately said, well, there was the Flash. And he's like, yeah, I saw it. And, like, we, so that was one of the yeah. things we should have been, like, oh, you know, that might come back. But, I mean, we didn't right away. But, yeah, this was still a lot of fun. Like I said, watchability was easy. Um, the one thing, which is where I kind of fought with the five, is, yeah, is it was even brought up in there. It's not Spielberg's best, but it's, like, is easiest to watch. Like I didn't realize that the two hours went by as we watched it because you just yeah. get so involved in it. It's just beautiful. The set dressing, the cinematography, the acting, the music. all works. The music was great. Mm -hmm. And it was just funny they used that intro music in certain spots that really helped out. And just and what was even more fun with this too is that this was in two thousand two, so we got to see you know, a, a, a relatively unknown Amy Adams, Elizabeth Banks, Ellen Pompeo. Yeah. Like, we got to see some th them, you know, before they really made their mark in Hollywood. So it was cool to see that as well. So that's what's always fun about watching these older films. You're like, hey, hey. And, like, they might just have a small part like they did, but we knew they would go on you to bigger that. and better things. And so that was kind of cool to see that as well. You so. get that Spielberg rub. Next thing oh, you yeah. know, you're a oh, star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, because remember, <laughs> Ellen, like, a uh, the next year was in old school and then later on you know got her big huge break on you know Grey's Anatomy yep. yeah Elizabeth Banks was just starting her trajectory because uh, a few years later she was in you know 40 year old virgin and Zach and Mary make a porno and stuff like that and started making her own stuff like Cocaine Bear and <laughs> the Pitch Perfect series you know so it, it was really wow. cool and then Amy Adams obviously we she's done so much since then it's amazing so yeah <laughs> And in the best twist and turn I've seen yet. Have you guys read this? No. no. We're doing our scores. No, we're doing there's our scores. claims that this entire story, I mean, you couldn't lie that he did prison time, but there's claims that his entire story is a big con. But he well, did, hey, still have to well, be talented. Well, let, well let, us, let us know, let in, us the know in the comments. comments. Yeah. You know, let so, us know more and more. Yeah, so basically, yeah. Uh, he was speaking on a campus he uh, at Xavier University in 2022. Uh, got a, a Heroes and Ethics Award. Um, at the end, a host of a podcast, Cams and Comms, said, <laughs> I wonder, in light of the Ethics Award, you're going to be presented tonight. Would you come clean? Would you tell the truth about the stories you've told? Will you admit that you just lied to everybody and you're still conning them? He denied telling any lies or whatever. And then um, there, there was professors um, who bunked, or debunked some of the stuff in a biography. And then... Uh, some 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 wild wild stuff and then uh they're talking about you know he canceled some tours well then i am the world's greatest con man as one gentleman said to me if i didn't do all those things and you've made all this money you've made in advances royalties and speaking engagements then you are in fact the world well, there you go maybe how much of it yeah, how much of it is true how much of what happened in the movie yeah. even happened? Yeah. Who knows? That's what makes it that much more fun. And that's why I'm oh, giving it a five. five. It's what? I mean, come, come on. Fives what? all around. This is the, I'm so glad Answer pulled this up. Well, we do it often. This is the best part of the whole movie. Huh? Is that the, we the whole thing the might whole be a movie. work. The whole thing might be a big work. I love it. Five plus. I'm not going to rewrite it. Careful, Boom. You know Careful on the mouse. Boom. <laughs> let, it, let us know what you all think then in the comments, too, about all that stuff. You know, did you love it for what it was? Do you think it was a great big con? What's real? What's fiction? Who knows? Who knows? So, for Appleton, Oak, Mason, Quinn, I'm, of course, the answer. Catch us if you can. Uh, Good night, pals.